Welcome friends, my name is Denise and I run the Poshmark Closet Eat, Play, Love. I am a part-time reseller on Poshmark and I am here today to talk a little bit about taking control of your reselling business. I follow a lot of people on social media that are in the reselling business. I have lots of reseller friends and I watch a lot of YouTube videos and I hear lots of murmuring about how people's sales are just down and they're horrible and they don't understand, they don't know what to do. They can't figure out what's going on. And I'm here today to tell you, just take a breath, take a breath, take a breather, and let's talk about things you can actually do. Actions create movement. Movement is going to create sales. I'm not going to give you the magic pill, but I'm going to tell you how my business is up 50% from January and February of last year. I recently hit the $100,000 in sales mark on Poshmark. I am very, very proud of that. I hit it in January. This year I am hitting $5,000 a month. What am I doing differently? I'm just gonna talk about what I'm doing. I'm gonna give you strategies of things you can do to improve your business. The first thing I'm opening with is a bag that I just sold in 12 hours that had been sitting almost a year. I'm gonna say eight months. It was a Hammett purse and Hammett is a brand that has a little following as it turns out. It's sort of a boutique brand of um, handbags. They use really beautiful leather, really great materials. It's kind of, the pieces that I've seen have a little bit more of like a Western vibe to them. So I had this bag in my closet and I would get traction on it, but not really anyone serious. And it was a $345 purse. It was new with tags and I was selling it for a friend. I can tell you right off the bat, I, I just didn't know what was going on. Like I would see reseller friends selling Hammett bags and I'm like, why can't I sell this bag? So I asked a reseller friend of mine, hey, she sells purses. What, what can I do to sell this bag? So I took a closer look at my listing, okay? The purse retailed for $345. I had it in my closet for $245. The stock photos for the purse were crappy. I mean, straight up. The stock photos stunk. Then I took the opportunity when I was deciding, like, I just don't like the way the stock photos look. The stock photo I had for my cover photo, it wasn't attracting attention to this purse. I decided to reshoot some photos. I decided to change one thing in the title and this is what made the purse sell in 12 hours. The name of the purse was the Hammett Duke Dapple Calf Hair Crossbody Bag or something like that. The actual pattern of the bag was like a giraffe print not something that is on my radar as a reseller, like at all. Well, my reseller friend who helped me revamp this did something that I don't do often enough and I'm giving you this as a strategy. If you have had an item sitting that you know could be a pretty popular item or should sell within 30, 60, 90 days of listing, not sit for almost a year, this is what you do. You click on the brand and then you sort by solds and then just start scrolling. Start scrolling and see what are these bags selling for? What are terms people are using for this bag? Well, my friend picked up that this particular bag, someone used the term giraffe print for, and it really did look like a giraffe print. So I decided when I changed the title to add giraffe print to the title. I'm gonna tell you exactly what I titled the bag. I mean, I, I like shook still that this sold. I titled the bag Hammett 
Duke, because Duke is the style of the purse and people seek out Duke bags. Giraffe print calf hair crossbody purse. Rare, new with tags. I listed it for $240 and I received an offer the next morning within 12 hours for $204 and I happily accepted it. I took an item that I had and I converted it to a sale. It was like sort of rubbing me the wrong way that I hadn't sold this purse yet. There was one other thing about this bag. On the back side, there was a leather, pebbled leather pocket that you could fit like a cell phone in. It had this little tiny white mark on the back of it and I had highlighted that when I originally posted the bag. Well, I took some acetone. I, because it was on the back, I felt comfortable trying this. I took some acetone, I wiped it on the spot, and then I immediately came in with my Doc Martin Wonder Balsam and I went over that spot. There was no signs of there having been a mark there. So that immediately helped things as well. I got rid of all of that old languaging. I did not copy and relist. I completely just took screenshots of the posting. I copied some of the language and then I'm gonna tell you the last thing I did to sell this darn bag. I copied everything and then I created a brand new posting. If you really wanna get serious about selling some items that have been in your closet, these are the things you have to do. I retook photos, I changed my title, I looked at sold items by the brand to see what was actually selling and I included some of those keywords into my new listing. I changed my price point a little bit. Poshmark has numbers that you can sort by for price points. So I made sure I was in that $100 to $250 price point. If people didn't want to pay, pay, they wanted to pay $100, but they didn't want to pay above $250, I got in in that grouping. So if you priced it at $251, you would miss potentially all of those buyers. So that's something really important to think about as well. Now this is the last thing I did, and it's kind of going to sound funny, but let me actually read it to you because it is bananas. I typed into chat GPT, which is completely free. Guys, it's free. I typed into chat GPT. Describe for me a Hammett Duke giraffe print crossbody purse. I asked ChatGPT to describe it for me. And this is what ChatGPT said. ChatGPT said, and this is what I put in my actual listing. They called it wild elegance. I put wild elegance in my listing. ChatGPT said, the Hammett Duke giraffe pattern calf hair crossbody shoulder bag is a stylish and luxurious accessory that combines functionality with fashion. This bag features a unique giraffe pattern crafted from high quality calf hair, adding a touch of exotic flair to any outfit. With its crossbody design, the Hammett Duke allows for hands-free convenience, making it perfect for busy days on the go. The adjustable shoulder strap ensures a comfortable fit for all body types, while the compact size makes it ideal for carrying your essentials without weighing you down. The bag is meticulously crafted with attention to detail featuring premium materials and durable hardware for longevity. Its interior is thoughtfully designed with multiple pockets to keep your belongings organized and easily accessible. Whether you're running errands around town or heading out for a night on the town, the Hammett Duke Giraffe per Pattern Calf Hair Crossbody Shoulder Bag is sure to make a statement and elevate your look with its sophisticated style. Yeah, 
Do I have time to consult ChatGPT for every posting? I don't, but do I have an extra two or three minutes for a $240 listing to really put in some languaging that is going to entice a buyer? I 1000% do, and it just shows you these little bits of effort are gonna make all the difference in your business. I don't wanna do that on a $10 tank top. Okay, it's a $10 tank top, take it or leave it. I added Mob Wife Western Giraffe Print and Animal, and I kind of maxed out, as you can imagine, all of the characters that you could have in a posting. So those are the things that I did that got this purse sold. What, why are my sales down? What am I gonna do? I guess I should just go thrifting. I'll feel better about myself if I just buy new stuff. I have mentioned this before and I don't know. I just, I don't think culturally it's very popular, but you don't have to go out thrifting every single day. I went thrifting this week. Are you ready for this? One time for 10 minutes before an appointment, I said, Denise, You've got 10 minutes and I actually really wanted to go thrifting today and I decided that my reselling space was just, had like exploded to a point that I no longer felt comfortable with. So guess what? I didn't go sourcing because I wanted to dedicate time to making my reselling space look good, feel good be organized. I got things together that need to go into inventory that were photographed. I got items hung up that I need to photograph and then they'll go in that bin and I will just do one big session sitting in front of the TV, bagging up all of these items and then getting them into inventory once they're posted in my closet. Look at this rack right here. Does it look like I need to go sourcing? No, I don't. I don't need to go sourcing. I am literally just watching my bank balance raise and raise and raise because I'm not spending money on my business. I have these things I need to post. I have some things over there I need to post. I have a bag of stuff my daughter's um, sorted out that I need to go through. So I have plenty of things I need to post. Do I love to go thrifting? I absolutely 1000% do. Sometimes there's a part of me that's just like, oh, if I could just pop in or I'll just drive out there, I'll just whatever. And today I just decided that I was going to take control of my reselling space. I'm going to take control of my reselling business. Now, the relisting is just one example of things that you can do to move things out of your closet. Let's look. I currently have 763 available listings. I have 763 available listings. And now there has been some controversy with people oversharing and maybe creating numbers that don't exist for their business. And I'm telling you everyone, I am 1000% legitimate here to help you with your reselling business. And when I realized that I was outselling people that I faithfully watched on YouTube, I was like, wow, I, I need to pivot and help people make money because I'm watching people and I'm making more money than them. So I need to share what I'm doing. Okay, back to closet clear out. Today I decided to manually, manually drop the price 30% on 600 listings in my closet of 700 and some listings. When you manually drop the price on for closet clear out, I'm gonna tell you how many items I sold as a result of that. I sold one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I sold seven items as a result of doing the 30% off closet clear out. There's a couple of things to be mindful of when doing closet clear out. If you have software that is an automated software that helps you um, with your Poshmark business with sharing and sending out offers to likers, turn off offers to likers when you do closet clear out. 
I dropped the price 30% today. I didn't want someone liking that item after I dropped it 30% and then my posh sidekick sending out 15% off and a shipping discount. I only wanted to send out 30% off offers. When you do something substantial like 30% off, you're immediately going to get a response from people like, oh, well, if she's offering 30% off, let's just send her an additional 50% off offer. I probably fielded about five offers that I wasn't interested in taking. Drop the price 30% manually. Turn off offers to likers. Third thing to do, after six hours, the shipping discount from Poshmark, if it's 10% lower than your previously published price, which it should be if you're offering something like 30%, you can choose any number you want, 40%, 15%. The fun thing about Closet Clear Out is that you don't have to offer a shipping discount. Um, the other thing to do is to turn off bundle offers if you have that automatically set in your closet. I no longer give a bundle discount in my closet. I just approach each bundle as an opportunity to touch base with someone. So I don't automatically send bundle offers anymore. So I don't have to worry about that. But that is another thing to worry about. And then in six hours, I'm the person who puts the price back up. This is what you have to do. You manually go into your closet, you say adjust price or whatever it is. You click on that button that's at the little wrench and then it says either raise or drop. I click on raise and now if you dropped your listings 30%, you actually have to raise your prices 45% to get back to the number of the 30%. Okay, so just bear with me for one minute. <laughs> just bear with me for a minute. If, let's say for an example, you had a $100 item and you dropped it 30%, that would be $70. If you raise that same item 30%, seven times three is 21, it's gonna go back to $91. So you have to raise it 45%. The majority of my listings are around the 30 to $60 price point. So the 45% raising really hits the sweet spot. If it's a $100 item and you raise it 45%, it's gonna go a little bit higher than your $100 and you can manually adjust it if you'd like. A really great strategy when you go in to go back and raise the price on items is to sort by recently price dropped and then scroll, scroll, scroll so it continues to load and then you have to press all the items and it'll tell you what the price is going up to. If you have to adjust a few on your own, you may have to adjust them. That's just kind of how it is. Here's a, another strategy, okay? And that is... Don't let items sit in your closet. Have Sidekick and it relists items for me after 60 days. But before I used Sidekick, I used Flip because it was free. I think Flip is now charging money and a lot of people are jumping ship. They're all freaked out about the $9 a month. So Sidekick has a list, uh, has a setting where it will relist the item after 60 days. It just copies, paste, deletes, da 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 da. Just the regular way. I used to manually print out an inventory report. And if you watch some of my old videos, you'll see me doing this. And then I sorted by how old the listing was in my closet. And I would just tick down like 10 items a day and relist them. I would go in, I would copy, and then I would delete the old one. I would revisit the price, I would revisit the title. And those were just the strategies that I use. I choose to pay for automation now to help me with that, but that was something I would manually do. Now I'm gonna give you one more example about letting items sit and not being afraid to delete something that has 40 likes. I had a pair of Birkenstock clogs in my closet. I think, 
I had them for about $65. They did have some visible wear to them. They're suede. Suede is really hard to like keep clean. I definitely adjusted the price according to what I thought the value was as far as like brand new and trashed. You know, it's like, okay, feel good about $65, $60, $65 listing price. I had 42 likes on these Birkenstocks. I believe the lowest offer I sent out was 35% off at one point or another with discounted shipping. None of those 42 people who had liked the Birkenstocks purchased them. So I did the best thing I know how to do. I screenshot all the photographs. I deleted that posting and I created a brand new posting. Those clogs sold today for $52. Since I reposted the clogs, it had 12 likes. So I dropped the price 30% today from $70 to 52 and they sold. I know sometimes people feel worried like, oh, that, that item has 40 likes on it. If you have 40 people and you have sent out your lowest offer, whatever that is, 15% may be your lowest on something. 50% may be your lowest on something. If you already sent that out and you know all 42 people have received that offer and no one bought the item, you're just wasting your time thinking these people are gonna come around and buy the item. Get the item fresh as a fresh listing just in. That means you have to manually create the listing again. Do all the things I just talked about. Do I like the title? What did people call these when I reposted them? I put in my listing. These are very similar to Boston, but I like the fit of them better than a Boston. I know people are searching Boston clogs. I snuck that in the posting. They were a little bit more unique. They had a tie to them. So that's just what I want to say. Like, don't be tied to likes or whatever. You know, also, if you're going to drop the price for closet clear out or make offers to likers, you could be strategic about what you want to do. So if you say, let's just make offers to likers 30% off, $5.95 shipping. When you go into the settings, then you can sort. Do the drop down menu, sort by likes, okay? And then say, okay, I'm gonna send out 35% off to the top 50 liked items in my closet. The beauty of closet clear out is that you can drop the price up 30%, whatever percent you set, and you they don't have to have likes on it. So it'll just drop that item in your closet. And then if someone happens to be shopping for that item, even if it wasn't liked by them, they're gonna see that as a recently dropped price listing. It's just a great strategy. Keep things active, current, fresh in your closet. These are some ways that you can take control of your reselling business. And the other thing is, and I'm gonna get a little bit closer to say this, and it, it's, it's, um, it's a little bit of a harsh reality if you feel like you're putting effort into your business and you're just not seeing the sales that you are accustomed to or the type of sales that you are hoping to find. You may need to diversify your strategies. I'm not shy in saying I never thought I would be a live seller. I went to Posh Fest. I jumped in on a live sale. I met live sellers and I decided to give it a try. And no one came to my live shows at the beginning. And now I am sometimes selling $500 a show that you don't have to go sourcing every day. Maybe if you find that you almost have um, a real deep desire to be outsourcing all the time, that maybe you just take a little step back and say you go four days a week, 
Maybe you set a goal for yourself. You're not gonna go until you get 50 items posted in your closet. That's how I am personally feeling. This rack right here, these two things just need to be hung up in a different closet. They are posted. This rack right here, okay? I'm gonna tell you what's on it. I'm gonna tell you what's on it. Patagonia, Smart Wool, Lululemon, Allo Yoga, Lululemon. Lululemon, Lululemon, Beyond Yoga, Girlfriend Collective, Patagonia, Free People Movement, ATM, Free People, Anthropology, Johnny Was, Free People, Outdoor Voices, Athleta, J Crew, Ibex, Free People, APC, Free People, Free People, and Naked Cashmere. Those are the brands that I have waiting to be posted in my closet. We need to be posting five things a day. I wanna get all of these things photographed and I wanna have them posted by Saturday evening. I've discussed before what I like to do. Phone. So I take the pictures in my phone as a square. I upload them to my drafts in, in the, the Poshmark app. app. I upload them to drafts and then I sit on the couch, I watch TV at night and at the same time, I am posting my drafts to Poshmark. That's just my workflow. It doesn't take my like physical presence away from hanging out with my family. I am a little bit distracted, but I'm sitting with my family and I'm getting things posted. And even if it's just five items, it feels good. Yeah. And I think that's all I have. That's all I have. And um, I don't mean to feel kind of preachy, but I've been growing the momentum of my business, which is really just so much bigger than it was last year. And I don't have more items, guys. I'm not growing the double the inventory. I have decided that around 800 items, eight, maybe I could get to about 850, but 800 items is my sweet spot. So I, I don't, I don't want to have 2000 items. I don't want to be in charge of 2000 items. I want to make five, $6,000 a month with 800 items. And I feel very confident that I could do that because that's currently what my business model is. I would like to thank you for watching this and I really appreciate all of you. I apologize for my absence, but I have been head deep in working on my business. And it just makes me proud that my numbers prove to me that I am on the right path. And sometimes that means I can't create content as much as I would like to. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate if you came back or you watched some of my other videos. And I really wish great success for you and your reselling business. I love Poshmark. I do not sell on any other platforms and I don't think Poshmark is going anywhere. There is so much opportunity on that platform and I am just going to dig my heels in and say it. There is opportunity. I always like to say, may kindness light your path. Take care everyone.